Today, inshallah, in the 58th ayah of Surah Al-Nisa, I want to share with you something that Allah Himself describes as inna Allah ni'imma ya'idukum bihi. No doubt Allah, how beautiful it is, the kind of advice He's giving you. Like, He gives us advice all the time, but He doesn't stop and say, you realize how beautiful this advice is? That's what He did in this incredible ayah. He actually stopped and praised the advice itself. So it must be something really, really special. Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَن تُؤَدُّوا الْأَمَانَاتِ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا وَإِذَا حَكَمْتُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ أَن تَحْكُمُوا بِالْعَدْلِ There are only two parts of the advice. He says, number one, no doubt about it, it is Allah in fact. He's the one that has commanded you that you give in full the trusts to those who deserve them. Fulfill trusts. You are entrusted with certain things. Make sure you do your full duty. This is the first great advice Allah says. Allah has certain rights over us. And we, he's entrusted us with La ilaha illallah and it comes with certain obligations. And it's the, He's the first Ahl really. He's the first one qualified that we should fulfill our trust before Him. But then we have a trust with His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how to honor Him, how to obey Him Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. Then we have a trust beyond that with the, the, our family, our parents, our neighbors. They are all, these are all trusts. Now Allah in this incredible you know, this, this summary of Islam is basically telling us that your life, the, the beautiful commandment that summarizes all of Islam altogether is you give people what they deserve. You make sure you give people what they deserve and no less. If you're an employer, give your employees no less than what they deserve. If you're an employee, give your employer no less than what he or she deserves. If you're a student, give your teacher what he deserves, what she deserves. If you're a teacher, give your students what he or she deserves, you know. If you're an imam, give your con congregation what they deserve. If you're a congregation, give the imam what they deserve. Everybody needs to get what they deserve. By the way, if you understand this comprehensively, this ayah, you live by it in every, pretty much every transaction in your life. You're driving on the street, before you cut someone off, you think, does this person deserve that? <laughs> you know, before you cut the, you know, cut in line, or, you know, grab somebody's, somebody else's stuff, you know, the, the courtesy we show each other, each other at the airports. You know, a lot of times, subhanAllah, people don't even live by this ayah when they park outside the masjid in Jumu'ah. You know, if there are people who deserve the right of way, you just cut right in, no, 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 I'm getting late. Well, he's not getting late. You shouldn't have come this late anyway. Then people park on other people's lawns and the, you know, even the non-Muslims have such a terrible impression of Muslims because we park in their spaces. These are people's rights. You can't just trample all over them. You have to give them their dues, you know. Then the Rasul Sallallahu tells us to look out for our neighbors. How many of us even know our neighbors? And that's a right they have over us. We don't even know them. We don't even know their names. We should know who they are. We should know how they're doing. We should be checking on them. We should be, when, we, when you make iftar, give, give some food to your neighbor. Say we're celebrating Eid, even if they're Hindu, they're atheist, they're Jewish, they're Christian, it doesn't matter. Give them and say we're celebrating, we want you to celebrate, you're our neighbor. Our Rasul taught us to take care of our neighbor, our messenger taught us to take care of our neighbor. If you need anything, let us know. SubhanAllah. How many Muslims are in fights with their neighbors? And to addul amanat ila ahliha. You give people, you give those who deserve rights their full rights. SubhanAllah. If we could just live by this one piece of advice, the Muslim ummah would look different. Your life and my life would look different. Our families would look different. And the second bit of advice, وَإِذَا حَكَمْتُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ أَن تَحْكُمُوا بِالْعَدْلِ and when the time comes that you have to make decisions between two people, meaning there's a dispute and you're the judge. Now you're thinking, I'm not a judge. I'm, what am I going to sit in a judge's chair and judge between people? Allah is saying, Ida, which actually means it's eventual. Between your parents there might be a fight, between your siblings there might be a fight, between your friends there might be a fight, between your classmates there might be a fight, co-workers there might be a quarrel. There will be some conflict and people will turn to you for what do you think? Whose side should you take? Allah says, whenever that happens, you side with justice. And tahkumu bil adl, that you judge with fairness. Sometimes the person you don't like is right. And the person you do like, your friend is wrong. It's hard to say your friend is wrong. You're gonna have to say it. It's sometimes it's hard to say that the other family is wrong. And your own family, the other family is right and your own family is wrong. It's hard to do it. You have to do it sometimes. Sometimes it's hard to tell your own brother, your older brother, that he's wrong. And the younger brother is right. And you have to side with the younger brother just because he's right. SubhanAllah. You're going to be put in those kinds of positions. إِذَا حَكَمْتُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ أَن تَحْكُمُوا بِالْعَدْلِ Then Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ نِعِمَّا يَعِذُكُمْ بِهِ What a huge bit of advice Allah is giving you. 
What a powerful sermon Allah is giving you inside these ayat. It's like a, as, a, as though Allah is saying, I don't think you realize what I just told you. <laughs> I don't think you realize how heavy this is. Just living by these two, these two declarations. The first of them, and to addul amanat ila ahliha. You give responsibilities to people who deserve them. One last comment about that first one, and then one last comment about the second one. In the case of the first one, you know sometimes people give a job to their nephew or their cousin or whatever, hookups. They don't deserve the job, but they slip them in, right? The, the Muslim connection sometimes. Is that, does that person deserve it? And if you live by this ayah, if there's a Christian who applies to the job, a, a Hindu applies to the job and he's more qualified, and the Muslim applies and he's not qualified, then you don't say it's Islamic for me to give a job to my Muslim brother. No, 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 no. You give the job to those who deserve it. You, you were hired as a human resource manager not to hire your Muslim brother. You were hired to pick the most qualified candidate. You know, this is unto Addul Amanat ila Ahliha. The Sahaba were very keen on this. They were extremely keen on this. When there was disputes between Muslims and non-Muslims, they would hear the Muslim side of the story first, even. And they'd hear it fully and they wouldn't assume that, oh, we're just gonna, our brother, how could he be wrong? They wouldn't do that. We can't do that. This is, you give rights to people that deserve them, you know? And sometimes you're put in that position. Give, when, you, when you, people ask you to give a recommendation, hey, could you recommend me on LinkedIn? Could you put in a good word? I'm sending a resume, can, I, can you sign my recommendation letter? Well, if you're not a good student, I can't sign your recommendation letter. If you didn't do decent work, I can't recommend you. But you're my Muslim brother. Yes, I am, which is why I can't lie on your behalf. We have to be honest and give recommendations to those who deserve. And the opposite of that is also true. Sometimes we don't like other Muslims coming up, right? So as they are, opportunities open up for them and people say, hey, what do you think about this one for marriage? Well, he's a good guy, but yeah, I don't know. Nah. Like you just don't want good to happen to him. Not because you have a real reason, but you just don't want him to have some good that was coming his way, subhanAllah. Don't be like that either. May Allah Azza wa Jal help us live by this very, very powerful advice. And through living by this advice, may Allah change the face of the entire Ummah. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.